We proceed by presenting the KSVD, an alternative dictionary learning algorithm. The KSVD was proposed in 2006 by Aaron, Brookstein and myself. This method is quite similar to the MOD with one major difference. The atoms are updated one by one. Actually, this change is accompanied by another more delicate modification that makes this method somewhat more effective. Alongside with the update of the atoms, we will be updating the elements in A, multiplying them. And so, just like in the MOD, KSVD updates A row by row by a pursuit algorithm. However, when time comes to update D, this will be done one column at a time and with modifications to A as well. Since the difference between the MOD and the KSVD resides on the dictionary update stage, let's focus on it. Assume for now that A is available and we are interested in updating the first atom D1. This expression describes our minimization goal and all we did here was to break the multiplication D times A into M rank 1 elements, each being one atom multiplying its corresponding row in A. Assuming that all the other atoms are kept fixed, along with their coefficients from A, we get this expression in which D1 and A1 transpose are both considered as unknowns. The expression denoted as E1 is a residual matrix of some sort that can be computed. Our goal is thus to bring this error to its minimum with respect to the two unknowns. Take a look at this expression. As we have just said, E1 can be computed and once given, we seek to update both D1 and the coefficients multiplying it from A. Obviously, once done, we will move to D2, etc., sweeping through all the atoms in D. This is clearly very different from what MOD does. Finding D1 and A1 transposed seems like a classic rank 1 approximation that can be done by SVD. If you are unfamiliar with SVD, I suggest that you stop this video immediately and read about it a bit before you proceed. Anyway, we use a series of SVD steps which explains the name of the algorithm. So this is great. Is this the whole story? We have just met this rank 1 error shown above, and the question is whether this is sufficient to conclude our story. The answer is negative. If we follow the above description and approximate E1 by a rank 1 matrix, we will get a dense vector A1 transposed. However, the original version of this row was very sparse. A small fraction of the examples are using the first atom, and for all the rest, the entries in this row are zeros. Thus, this approach will ruin the sparsity of A. What should we do? The answer is to update only the non-zeros in the A1 transpose. When we look at the examples, we should consider only those that use D1, and only they get to vote for its new value. Thus, we should discard of all the rest of the examples as shown here. This way, only the relevant examples influence the new choice of D1. Algebraically, this is achieved by the operator P1, which removes the irrelevant columns from E1. The vector A1 tilde is the non-zero portion that we are to update together with D1. So, to conclude, we start by computing E1, then we remove the irrelevant columns from it, and then we apply the rank 1 approximation in order to find D1 and its coefficients in A. This should be repeated for all the atoms. Note that the atom D1 should be normalized. While we keep mentioning the SVD for handling the rank 1 approximation task, a simple alternative can be suggested in which we update D1 while freezing A1 transposed, and then update A1 transposed while keeping D1 fixed. Each of these is a simply squares with a closed form update formula. In practice, two or three such rounds are sufficient to get the necessary accuracy. We have just met the MOD and the KSVD. The MOD iterates between an update of A to an update of D. And the KSVD does something slightly more complex in the dictionary update stage. It modifies the atoms in D one by one when also touching A. It turns out that there is a way to speed up both these methods. The rationale is this. In the stage we have referred to as the dictionary update stage, what we should really do is to update both D and all the non-zeros in A. This means that the information passing from the sparse coding stage is only the location of the non-zeros. Indeed, both the MOD and the KSVD can be considered as approximations of this idea. Once A has been updated, 
Our problem is defined as updating the dictionary D and the non-zero elements in A while keeping the zeros intact. So how should this be done? We have two options, MOD or KSVD style solutions. In the MOD option, we should update D as we have already shown, but this should be followed by a similar update of the non-zeros in A. This is a least squares problem that is easily manageable. Of course, we have to apply several rounds of these two steps. The KSVD approach is even simpler. All that is needed is to apply the sweep through all the M atoms in D several times, and that's it. By the way, if you're wondering about the additional complexity, don't be. Most of the effort in dictionary learning algorithms reside in the pursuit stage, where we compute the alpha j's. Thus, the changes we are describing here are rather negligible.